Io sono Monkey di Luffy e diventerò il re dei pirati. One Piece live action series finally premieres. This series, produced by Netflix, boasts a whopping 150 million dollar investment. The manga's creator, Eiichiro Oda, also serves as an executive producer. The story kicks off with the execution of Pirate King Gold Roger in Logetown. The scene is packed with onlookers, including figures like Garp and Myhawk. As Gold Roger meets his demise, he reveals that he's hidden a fabled treasure, One Piece, somewhere in the Grand Line, and encourages people to embark on the quest to find it. Ricchezza, fama, potere. Ho avuto tutto ciò che il mondo ha da offrire. Liberatevi! Prendete la via del mare! Il mio tesoro è vostro se volete. Gold Roger is ultimately sentenced to death, but his words ignite a passion for the seas, marking the dawn of the great pirate era. Fast forward 22 years, and in the East Blue, Monkey D. Luffy sets sail in a small boat. His dream? To find One Piece and become the Pirate King. Now Luffy's boat is leaking and he can only hide in a wine barrel and float on the sea. Next, the Alvida pirates make a flashy entrance, led by the infamous Captain Alvida, who's a heartthrob for many. On board is a handsome young man named Kobe, who was abducted and forced into slavery by Alvida. One night, Kobe spots Luffy emerging from a barrel in the ship's hold, leading to an unexpected friendship between the two. Luffy reveals his pirate aspirations and reminisces about his past. Ten years ago, in Windmill Village, Luffy crossed paths with red-haired Shanks and the Red Hair Pirates. Among them were notable figures like Beckman, Yasop, Lajalu, and others. Luffy's burning desire to become a pirate led him to implore Shanks to take him out to sea. But Shanks points to the scar on his face and says that sailing means risk. Unexpectedly, Luffy hurt his face to show his determination. Back in the present, Kobe and Luffy inadvertently awaken Alvida. With Luffy's encouragement, Kobe finds the courage to stand up to Alvida, leading to an intense confrontation between the two sides. During the fight, Luffy demonstrates his rubber fruit power and beats Alvida to death. Basta così. In the end, Luffy delivers a powerful punch, sending Alvita flying and saving Kobe, on another part of the world. The bounty hunter Zoro finds himself on Sixus Island, where he encounters MR7 of Baroque Works. MR7 extends an invitation to Zoro to join Baroque Works, but Zoro firmly declines and engages in a fierce battle with MR7, ultimately defeating his opponent. The next day, Luffy and Kobe set sail on the open sea. Luffy remembers the origin of the rubber fruit's power. In this world, various mysterious devil fruits grant those who consume them supernatural abilities. However, the price for such power is the inability to swim. Luffy's own powers stem from accidentally consuming the gum gum fruit that Shanks had acquired. At that moment, the mountain bandit king Say walked into the Machino Tavern. His bounty was as high as 8 million belly, and he dared to provoke Shanks. To everyone's surprise, Shanks remained completely unfazed by the mountain bandit's taunts. Shanks' cowardly behavior makes his companions laugh. However, Luffy was particularly angry and believed that Shanks should not allow himself to be humiliated. Shanks also noticed that Luffy had consumed the rubber fruit. Fast forward to the present. Luffy learned that Kobe's dream was to become a marine. He took Kobe with him to the town of Seashell, which had a marine base. The town was plastered with numerous wanted posters, including those of Beliers, Fukuroshi, and Bakura. Luffy couldn't help but wonder why he didn't have his own wanted poster. Meanwhile, Nami made her entrance. Nami tricks the pirates into coming to her boat by pretending to ask for help. And then she takes the boat and leaves in style. Next, Luffy. Nami and Zoro arrive at the restaurant in Shell Town. Kabeji also sneaks in. Later, Nami flirted with a marine, while Zoro received a warm welcome from Rika, the daughter of the restaurant owner. Rika accidentally collided with Captain Morgan's son, Helmeppo. Zoro picks up the food that has fallen on the floor and eats it, telling Rika that the food is delicious and asking Helmeppo to apologize. In response, Helmeppo pulled out a weapon, intending to teach Zoro a lesson. Ma fare male. <laughs> In the end, Zoro effortlessly defeated Helmeppo. Nami took the opportunity to knock out a marine and strip him of his clothes. Nami planned to infiltrate the marine base to steal the chart to the Grand Line. Meanwhile, Luffy was impressed by everything Zoro had done. Later, 
Zoro brought the head of MR7 to Morgan to claim the bounty. Captain Morgan was in charge of the Marine base and ruled with an iron fist on the island. Captain Morgan used the excuse of assaulting Marines to try to arrest Zoro. Then, Morgan threatened Zoro. Puoi provare ad arrestarmi, ma il tuo marmocchio sarà il primo che ucciderò. Hey! Non può parlarmi in questo modo! Oh! Claiming he could make Zoro's life as a bounty hunter miserable. In order to keep his job, Zoro agreed to be tied to a wooden frame for seven days. The next day, Luffy infiltrated the marine base to steal the navigation chart. He unexpectedly ran into Zoro and invited him to become his companion. Zoro, in turn, revealed that his dream was to become the world's greatest swordsman and have his name ring throughout the heavens. Subsequently, Luffy helped Zoro to break free, and he ventured deeper into the base to steal the navigation chart, where he encountered Nami. Meanwhile, Helmeppo was probably brandishing Zoro's sword in his room, not expecting Zoro to suddenly appear. Hai intenzione di uccidermi? Oh no. Ho in mente qualcosa di ben peggiore. Next, Luffy and Nami teamed up. Nami managed to steal Morgan's keys, and together, they grab the safe containing the navigation chart. But the Navy discovers their actions, and a battle breaks out. During the battle, Zoro couldn't resist joining in to assist Luffy. Nami used a wooden staff to deal with the regular Marines. While Zoro and Luffy faced off against Morgan, Morgan's big axe is so powerful that it overpowers Zoro and Luffy for a while. And then Zoro finally gets serious about tying his hood. Ecco come fa a usarla. And that's how Luffy and Zoro beat Morgan. They and Nami are ready to leave with the safe. Suddenly, Helmeppo appeared with a gun, wanting to arrest Luffy, sporting a new hairstyle courtesy of Zoro. Now Helmeppo is very cocky and wants to make a name for himself. He said a hero. Potrei anche ricevere una medaglia o qualcosa. Kobe? Dio che male! Ma è stato anche molto bello. In the end, Kobe knocked out Helmeppo. Kobe told Luffy that he would stay in Seashell Town to join the Marines. Luffy responded by saying that they would always be friends. Soon after, Luffy set sail with Zoro and Nami. On the other side, the very handsome phone bug makes his appearance. Garp learned that the Straw Hat pirates were causing trouble in Seashell Town and prepared to capture the pirates. Garp was accompanied by his assistant, Bogard. Garp quickly arrived in Seashell Town and took a liking to the newly enlisted Marine. Kobe. Garp not only punished the corrupt and dictatorial Morgan but also decided to personally lead a team to capture the Straw Hat Pirates. But, upon learning the identity of the Straw Hat Pirates, Garp's expression suddenly changed. Okay. Luffy. Con un cappello di paglia. E hai detto che il suo nome è... È Luffy. Sì, signore. Meanwhile, Kabeji reported to Buggy that Luffy had stolen the Grand Line's navigation chart. As a result, Buggy decided to go after the chart. Quella è la mia mappa. E me la riprenderò. <laughs> Back with Luffy's group, Nami used her hearing to open the safe. They finally obtained the navigation chart for the Grand Line. Nami with her exceptional navigational skills, began to introduce the world to Luffy. There are four seas in this world, one in the southeast, one in the northwest and one in the southwest. With the Red Earth Road running through the middle, and the channel perpendicular to the Red Earth continent is the Great Voyage, along the Great Voyage to find the One Piece. At this time, the sea was suddenly attacked by smoke bombs and all of them were unconscious. Upon awakening, they found themselves in a circus, with the circus owner being none other than the pirate Buggy. Buggy had taken over Orange Town and forced all the residents to become his audience. Buggy then attempted to force Luffy to hand over the navigation chart. He stretched Luffy's body and bound him to a spinning disc. Meanwhile, Kabeji was torturing Zoro in a small room. Zoro had previously killed Kabeji's brother for a bounty. Kabeji ties Zoro to a spinning disc and throws knives at him. Next, Buggy suddenly noticed Luffy's straw hat. This hat was very familiar to Buggy, 
It had once belonged to Gold Roger and was later passed on to Shanks. It turned out that both Buggy and Shanks had been apprentices on Gold Roger's ship. Shanks had inadvertently caused Buggy to consume the Chop Chop fruit, which left Buggy unable to swim and hunt for treasure at sea. As a result, Buggy had held a grudge against Shanks. At this moment, Luffy struggled to break free but was once again rendered unconscious by Buggy's fruit powers. After that, Luffy was locked in the water tank, the tank continuously filled with seawater, rendering Luffy powerless. In this moment, Luffy began to reminisce about his past. In the past, Say had mocked pirates and Shanks in front of Luffy. Luffy, filled with anger, defended Shanks, but he ended up getting kidnapped by Say. Upon learning of this incident, Shanks was furious. He could tolerate insults directed at himself, but he couldn't stand to see his friend harmed. Shanks makes a gesture of shooting to scare the bandits. <laughs> I didn't expect the red hair pirates to take down all the bandits in just a few moments. Say, terrified, fled to the sea, taking Luffy with him. At that moment, a colossal sea king, the king of the ocean, suddenly appeared. It not only devoured Say but also caused Luffy to fall into the sea. Fortunately, Shanks arrived in time to rescue Luffy and pulled him back onto the ship. However, the ferocious sea king had its sights set on Shanks and opened its enormous mouth. In the end, Shanks managed to scare off the Sea King. Shanks' left arm had been bitten off while saving Luffy, but he didn't seem to mind. Instead, he comforted Luffy, 